lab 31, we're going to start this last example here on my computer, and then I'm actually going to flip back to my handwritten notes and finish this out. So let's read through this question. It says the number of hospital outpatient visits in millions for selected years is shown in the table. In the table, zero represents the year 2000, one represents the year 2001, nine represents the year 2009, and so on. The number of outpatient visits is given in millions. So you can see our independent variable here is time. It's years since 2000. So this is really 2009, 2010, all the way up to 2017. So semi-recent data, right? And then we have the number of outpatient visits at hospitals, right? You can see it was 592.7 million in 2009, and it's jumped to 710 million as of 2017. So we have this direction here that says, draw a scatter plot on your calculator and determine the quadratic model for these data. Well, we have a stat problem here. So what we're going to do is we're going to enter that stats data into our lists. And I know it's been a little while since we've done data or done a, a problem with some data, or I guess it actually hasn't been too, too long. But anyways, um, so if we want to get into that screen, we need to hit our stat button because we're looking at data. So let's hit stat and let's see what I have in there. I'm going to hit enter. And I have a whole bunch of data from whenever the last time we did a stats problem. And I think that was just section 4.3. So if I want to clear lists out, there were a few ways to do this. Um, I happen to have stuff in L1, L2, L3. I want to remind us of the two buttons to push. So if you're up in L3, where L3 has the black background, hit clear and enter, and then it's gone, right? So that was one way. Um, the way I usually clear out my lists is I hit second and the plus sign, and I go with option four because it just clears all of my lists at once, and I'm lazy, right? I want stuff done sooner rather than later. So once you've cleared your list out, um, pending you had data in your list, let's go back into it. So stat and enter, and let's do some data entry. Let's all collectively put our independent values, the years since 2000, into L1. And then we'll put the number of hospital outpatient visits into L2. So let's start loading this up. We got 9, 10. Give me a moment to get my data in here. Okay. And then my first Y value is 59, oops, 592.7. Oops, no decimal point. There we go. Okay. Okay, so things to take a look at. Um, I, I want to make sure that I have the same number of data values in L1 as L2. If you don't, when we're a, and we move forward and we try and make a scatter plot, your calculator will return an error. And I, I can fake that in a moment and show you what that means. Um, just because I have so much stuff right here, I'm going to clear this out because you don't, you don't actually need that. All right, so once we've got our data in our list, again, you're going to hear me say a lot of two-button commands. So it's stat enter to get into your lists. And then it's second and y equals to get into your stat plots. And for mine right now, I can see it's off. I need to turn the first one on. And it's ready to go. I have the scatter plot selected. And then I have L1 against L2. It's, just, it's off right now. So let me hit enter and enter again. And now you can see that even though it's flashing, on has the black background. So there we go. All right. So again, stat enter, put data in your list. Second Y equals, set up your stat plot. Once it's ready to go, here's the next two buttons, zoom, nine. All right, so we've got something looking like that. There is my scatter plot. All right, and it kind of looks, to me it looks a little linear, but can you also kind of see a curve in there? Just a, just the hint of a curve, right? Just a slight hint of a curve. All right, so with that, 
it says determine if a quadra or determine the quadratic model for these data. So how we're going to do this, it's very similar to how we ran linear regression or we did linear modeling in section 4.3. 4 but instead of doing stat calc 8, we're going to do stat calc 5. So slightly different. So let me go back to my home screen. All right, again, two buttons, second mode. Let me hit mode. There we go. Going to quit. All right, here's the fun calculator string. So we're going to hit stat. We're going to go to calc. If you remember in section 4.3, we did stat calc 8. Oops, I went too far. 8. And that was great when we were doing linear regression. And again, regression just means taking some data and, put data and putting a math function on it. So we had data in 4.3 and we slapped a line on it. We want to slap a parabola here. So we're going to use quadratic regression. So we're going to hit option 5 here. Oops, went one too high. 5. All right. And from here on in, the calculator's commands are the same. So I need to tell my calculator where to look. We're going to look at L1 comma L2 and I would like my calculator to take that quadratic model and put it into I want to put it into Y1. Ooh, and just before I do that as I'm looking at it I have some stuff I need to clear out. If you have anything in Y1 and Y2 clear them out. Okay so let me go back to my home screen second in mode All right, and now I need to tack on Y1. So we're gonna hit bars I'm gonna go to Y variables and I'm gonna hit enter enter and then I'll hit enter one more time. And there is my quadratic model, right? So my leak coefficient, it, it looks like it's negative, right? Negative 0.816. And then I have my linear term. And then I have my constant, my y-intercept. All right. And my r squared's pretty high. If you remember in linear regression, we looked at r. For every other type of regression in stats, we look at r squared. So r is just for linear data. Um, but r squared, it's pretty close to 1. That's good. Now if I hit zoom 9, you're going to see that parabola coming through. And you can kind of see that curve now. You can see it curving around. All right. So again, when I flip back to my paper answers, I'm going to write that up. But I also want to address this. All right. So it says use the model from part A to predict the number of visits in 2020. And I want to look at this on our calculator screen. And then again, when I flip back to my handwritten notes, I'll show you how you can do it. By, by paper and mostly on hand. All right, but here we go, 2020, that's the year they gave me. Now you wanna be careful. I don't want to plug in 2020 to my function, right? Because 2020 is the year, but the X values, right? These are years since 2000. So I'm hoping you're seeing that it's been 20 years since the year 2000. So my X value is actually 20. And we have a calculator command to help us with that. I can hit second and I can hit calc, right? We just spent a bunch of time looking at maxes, zeros, intersection points. So now let's look at a value, all right? And what value would I like to plug in? 20, because that's what it's asking me to do, predict for the year 2020. Now I'm about to hit enter and something a bit off is gonna happen, right? I'm gonna get this, this error. The reason being is your calculator doesn't like the 20 because the window isn't set for it. If you take a look at your initial data, it went from 9 to 17, at least in terms of the x values, the stuff in L1. And you can see your window went a little bit below 9 to a little bit above 17. But I'm trying to plug in 20 right now. Right? If I go back, right, what was I trying to do? Plug in 20, and my calculator's like, uh uh, thanks for playing. It's really not happy with me. Oops. Let me go to my window again. I need to extend this beyond 20. So you can pick any number you want. You could pick 20 itself. You could pick 21, 22, 49. It doesn't matter. I'm going to go with 25. That seems reasonable. Now, whenever you adjust your window here, don't hit zoom 9. If you hit zoom 9, it'll go right back to 17.8. Hit graph. And you can see that I have a lot more space on the right here because I'm not going to 17.8, I'm going all the way out to 25 on my x-axis. Which is great because that's gonna help me when I wanna calculate or when I wanna predict the number of visits in 2020. All right, so let's try this again. Second, trace, option one. Now let's plug in 20. When I hit enter, there we go. 
I've got 721.449 million visits predicted to happen in the year 2020. Now we'll compare that number to the one we get by hand, but keep in mind this one's a little bit more precise because it's saving all of those decimals. All right, so with that, I'm gonna flip back and we're gonna try and do this problem again, um, writing out all the answers on paper. I'll see you in a bit, bye. Hey Math 31, welcome back to example seven. I just wanna take a moment and write as much of this problem out by hand as I can. So let's say we have our data in our list, right? Stat enter, and there it is. And just to review up what we, we just did on our computer screen, here we go, we're gonna do, actually, before we do that, let me check, I did have something in my Y equals, let me clear that out. All right, I'm gonna go back to my home screen, second in mode. So we're gonna do stat calc five this time, because we're gonna get a parabola matched here. And we're gonna go L1, L2, and then I'm gonna ask my calculator to drop it into Y1. All right, so there is my parabola. I'm going to write this up as a function right now. So I can see my A value is negative 0.816, my B value 35.199, and my C value is 343.968. And I typically go three decimal accurate. You can go as many decimals if I don't specify, but if I do specify, then make sure you're, you're using the right number of decimals. So here we go, we would have that the number of visits, so f of x, can be modeled by negative 0.816x squared plus 35.199x plus 343.968. There we go, so that is the quadratic model for these data, I found it, okay? All right, so the second part of this question, let me just scooch this up a wee bit. The second part of this question asked us to predict, or to use that model to predict the number of visits in 2020. Now I'm gonna scooch this up even more just so I have enough space to write this out. All right, now I had, I had mentioned that you wanna be careful. You do not wanna plug 2020 in for X here because 2020 is not represented by 2020. This is supposed to be years since 2000. So if I wanna actually find the X value, I need to do my current year minus my base year. That's always gonna be the formula for finding X values when you have a base year. Current year minus base year, so we're gonna get X is equal to 20. So if I want to do F of 20, I can do negative 0.816 times 20 squared plus 35.199 times 20 plus 343.968. Now I'm gonna do this on my calculation screen and then I'm gonna check it against my, my graphing screen. So let's try this. So I'm gonna do, I'm gonna store 20 into X all right, if you don't remember the store function, I mentioned it a few times, but it's always good to repeat it. It's that number, or excuse me, it's that button above the on key. And whenever you touch it, a little arrow shows up. So I'm gonna sh store 20 into X, so I can just type in negative 0.816X squared plus 35.199X plus 343.968. And it looks like I'm getting about 721.548. So let me go ahead and write that in here. This would be 721.548. And then of course we need units. And the units on these Y values, they were millions of visits, right? Because we were talking about people going to the hospital. So million, I'll put million visits, 721.548 million visits. All right, now if I want to do this on my graphing screen, let me check that my stat plot is on. So on my, my actual computer, it's off. I think on my, com um, my actual computer, my actual calculator, it's off. Let me turn it on. I'll hit on, all right. So I should have, I do have L1 against L2. They did drop my model in there, so let me hit zoom nine. And there's that scatter plot, and then you can see I have overlaid my quadratic model on it. 
right? So here is my model. This is always the model. Here's your stat plot, right? M math function, stat, uh, stat, scatter plot. So math and stats mixing it up a little bit. All right, so with that, let's calculate what's going on in the year 20. So I'm gonna hit second, trace. I'm gonna do option one. I'm gonna hit 20 and it'll pop back out an error. And we talked about this in the video, but it's worth repeating. When I look at my window, my X max is only 17.8 because the largest data value I had occurred in the year 17, or really 2017. But if we look back, let me just scooch this down again. All right, if we look back, right, this was the year 2017. This was the year 2009. And that's what my, my Zoom 9 window did. It, it built around 9 to 17. Well, if I'm trying to plug in for 20, I need to extend this. So you can pick any number beyond 20. I think when we did it on the computer, I picked 25. So let me go ahead and type in 25. Now again, if you alter anything in here, don't hit zoom nine. It'll just take this right back to 17.8. You hit graph. So when I hit graph, I can see a lot more space on the right side of my graph here, but I'll be able to plug in. So let's do second trace one, plug in 20, hit enter, and I'm getting 721.449. Let me just scooch this back up a little bit and see where we left off. So when we were doing it by hand or by the, the function model, we got what, 721.548. So you can see it's off by just a little, by about a tenth of a unit, right? Or a tenth of a million. So it's not off by too much, but this one actually is more precise because it saved all of those decimals. All right, so I have the basic stat functions written down here, the directions, and then on the following pages, it's, it's very detailed as to how to get all of that information from your calculator. So that takes us to the end of section 5.1. All right, so we've taken a look now at a whole bunch of stuff having to do with parabolas. So just to remind you, in chapter four, we were looking at lines. In section 5.1, we're looking at parabolas. And now that we've taken our basic two, two graphs and we, we've dissected them, we're gonna start moving beyond linear and quadratic. We're gonna look at cubics, then cortex, and then any degree polynomial. So that's, that's where we're headed in chapter five. All right, I'll see you in a few, bye.